So is walking weight bearing? Yes, it is. I'm Margaret Martin, registered physiotherapist, and I devote my practice to keeping people healthy through exercise. Most of my clients have osteoporosis or low bone density, and so if you were asking that question, if walking is weight bearing, I'm assuming you have some concerns about your bones. So it is weight bearing. However, how fast you walk will dictate whether or not it's fast enough to stimulate your bones. Now, when it comes to studies, there was an earlier study done in 2012 looking at weight bearing in adolescence, saying that it needed to be, you needed to have four times your body weight in order to stimulate your bones, which would be equivalent to jumping off of countertops, you know, over and over again, um, or sprinting really, really, really hard. And so, fortunately, there was another study that was done and this was a Dutch study in 2018 that started to look at the actual forces in the hip joint um, when doing different activities. And they found that there was sufficient forces in the hip joint when individuals were walking at at least 3.1 miles an hour. So what happens as we walk faster is we hit the ground with more force. And not only are we hitting the ground with more force, but it takes more muscle control from our legs to stop us from falling. Literally, when you think about walking and running, these are activities where you're, with each step, just stopping yourself from falling. You're then taking the next step. Um, now, a lot of my clients will go, well, how long do I walk for? Well, the recommendations by exercise uh, groups around the world are that um, one should aim for somewhere between 150 and 300 minutes a week. And that's not just for keeping our bodies healthy, but also our brain healthy. So when we, you know, take those numbers and we say, okay, on a daily basis, that means we're looking for at least 20 to 40-ish minutes in a day. Now we know for our bones, if we can aim for that 40 minutes, great but it will be even better for your bones if you can break it up, meaning two shorter walks. And that's a great thing because if I'm asking you to walk as quickly as you can or comfortably can, then you are gonna have an easier time doing that in two shorter walks than one long walk. Now, I still have clients that go, Margaret, 3.1 miles an hour, that's pretty fast for me. And how do I get to build up? So here are some tips. So many of you have heard of high intensity interval training. What essentially that means is you bring in little spurts of, of working as hard as you can. And so initially those little spurts only have to be 10 or 15 seconds and then you can build to 20 seconds. What I have found with, and having done this with hundreds of clients is by interjecting faster little bouts of walking, then you will ultimately end up being a faster walker. So how does that look in your walk? Say you're currently doing a 15 minute walk. Well, you might start out and, you know, your first five minutes, just treat it as you always do. Use it as a warm up. you know, going, okay, yep, I'm feeling good. Joints are feeling good. And then as you are comfortable, you go, okay, from this light post to the next light post, I'm going to walk as quickly as I can and then you go back for a minute or so, two minutes, walking at your comfortable pace. And then you introduce another spurt of brisk walking. So what will happen over time is that you will just notice that your regular walking speed is actually a little bit slow and your body will just have that invitation to start walking faster. Now, I am concerned, however, for my clients who have poor balance. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't walk. It just means that you have to be safer. And all the studies show, you know, people that walk more have a higher rate of falling. Well, yes, if you sat in your chair all day, you probably wouldn't fall as much, but it doesn't mean you shouldn't walk because you have poor balance. It just means you have to take care, meaning that you wear proper shoes, sturdy shoes, um, look for shoes that have Vibram soles. Vibram soles have really good grip to them. They um, dissipate the forces more evenly through your feet. And so that's one thing, shoes that lace up so you can get the, the snug fit around your foot. 
all very good. Light hiking boots, depending on the surface that you enjoy walking on. Now the other thing to strongly consider is using poles. You know, they're so much more popular and there's so many different styles available. And if you need to find out more about Nordic walking, I have a whole lot of information for you here. So um, those are things that you can do to keep yourself safe. Now, I have to add, people always go, oh, well, if w walking just with my body weight is good, how about if I use ankle weights? Well, if you wanna hear my comment on ankle weights, you click on here. And then of course people get like at the other side and we go, well, well, I won't wear ankle weights, but how about wrist weights? Well, you can hear my comment about wrist weights uh, here. So, and then lastly is, you know, can I wear a weighted vest when walking? And so I do have my opinion on weighted vests as well. And you can listen to that blog um, as well. I hope that um, this has been um, helpful for you to understand walking and weight bearing and how you can make it work for your bones and keep yourself safe as well. So thanks very much for watching this video today and I wish you a lovely day.